We are spending 22 minutes today with Dr. Terry and Heather Dubrow, authors of The Only Guide You Will Ever Need to the Best Anti-Aging Treatments. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you, Bridget. It's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Now, up top, it says Dr. and Mrs. Guinea Pig. Explain that. Yes. Okay, so obviously, I'm a doctor. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon for a lot of years, and Heather and I... Heather used to come home and say to me in the beginning of my practice together, she used to say, hey, what about this new treatment? Does this work? I go, it doesn't work. And she go, what about this one that would can't come out? I'd say, no, that one doesn't work either. And she says, some of this stuff has to work. So ultimately, we started testing everything mm -hmm. and testing it on ourselves to determine what works and what doesn't work because this area of health, wellness, and beauty is filled with things that don't oh work. We call them wallet biopsies, okay? <laughs> All they do is lighten your wallet. But in reality, there's a lot of good and a lot of nonsense. So we wanted to give people the opportunity to figure out for them at what or the stage that in life they're at what will work for them so because I believe everything works or at least I want to believe it I think right. most of us want to have you know a jar of hope <laughs> somewhere yeah. Yeah. so I really want to believe that everything works Terry thinks nothing works and a lot of the way doctor and mrs. guinea pig started was that it was Terry had a cold and he refused to take cold medicine and I said, well, let me get this for you. He goes, it doesn't work. I go, it's a billion dollar it industry. It wasn't prescription. Because it, it wasn't prescription. To him, it was not scientifically proven. He didn't, it wouldn't use the cold mess. So he finally took some, and he felt better. And it he worked. had a little aha moment. So then we started trying more things. And then these, you know, lotions and potions. And of course, we have our Consult Beauty um, skincare line, which we've been doing for about 16 years. Yeah. And through our research with that, Dr. And Mrs. Guinea Pig was born. Right. Now, I, I'm, I'm really wondering if you're trying everything because I'm, I'm going to jump ahead to the very end of the book. Yeah. You, have, you have some wacky treatments. Okay. Um, leech therapy, a Dr. We, we Theodoric that. of York over here, I guess, and a snail smile. Have you you've yes. actually tried these? Both you tried of the those. leeches? Yes, both of those. And, and I'll tell you, every, you put it. leeches on your wife. Well, she put, put them on, on you. On each of us, we put oh. leeches. Yeah. yeah. Everything <laughs> in this book, we've either tried, seen, Terry's performed it, or we bring an expert in to talk about it. Okay. Because we really wanted to bring, give everyone a real comprehensive guide to the risk reward. You know, because some things do work, some things don't work. What's worth the money, what's not worth the money? How did the leeches work? That was a disaster. It didn't work, yeah. It was a real problem. We put leeches in our stomach, they suck the blood out of us, mixed with their blood, then you re make them regurgitate it out and Milk put it on your them. face as a facial. Why is that supposed to be good? Uh, because the properties that the leeches have in terms of the enzymes and your own blood in terms of its sort of regenerative mm -hmm. factors mixed together, theoret some celebrity came out and showed a picture of herself, you can Google it, and she said this is the greatest <laughs> thing ever. And that's what moves the needle in health, wellness, and beauty many times. Sure. A celebrity will come out, tout some treatment, everybody will do it, it right. doesn't work. And it's a right. fortune. And it's right. a fortune. Right. It becomes the new hot thing that doesn't work. And with the leeches, we were bleeding for hours. We actually we had to go <clears> to <throat> a party for Real Housewives of Orange County that night. We had duct tape all over us. We bled through our clothes. Yeah. It became a storyline on the show because it was so crazy. We had bite marks for, what, six, seven months? Yeah, and it didn't work at all. That was a big... You also talk about um, makeup in the book. You mm -hmm. have a, a really helpful segment on that. And, um, and, and Terry, you were mentioning that a lot of times celebrities drive things. Lately, I've been noticing a lot of stories about celebrities in this minimalist movement, which you talk a little bit about in your book, Less is More. Um, does, that, does that work for, for everybody? Because I know I, I, if you're going to be on camera, you want some makeup. Absolutely. I mean, most women do. But, you know, it takes a lot of makeup to get a natural look. <laughs> I, most people don't realize it, but it actually does because your skin has to be absolutely perfect if you're going to do the natural look. Yeah. I mean, I think it's all about confidence and what makes you feel good makes you look good. Yeah. I know for me, when I'm not working, I don't worry if there's paparazzi around or any, that kind of stuff. I'll go completely makeup free yeah. because I think having healthy, great skin is makes everyone look good and you can just walk around and like some that. people do look really good the pictures of alicia keys and different people were amazing but she, but maybe she is just gifted with gorgeous or, skin or she's been going through a wonderful skincare regimen that we mm -hmm. of type which we outline in the book right. and she's looking particularly good she goes you know what today i'm not going to wear much <laughs> makeup because my skin's looking so right. good look at me the mo minimalist yeah. movement <laughs> take a picture of me right? now right yeah so. okay that 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 makes sense um the basic mantra in your book though and and i like this 
this. It was if you're going to take care of your skin, take care of your, if you're going to do any procedures, whatever you're going, going to do, you want to look like yourself. And, and again, in the celebrity culture, there has been some backlash against some celebrities and then backlash against the backlash. Yeah. People like Renee Zellweger, some people said, oh my gosh, she's unrecognizable. What, what do you think of some of those plastic surgery jobs? Um, well, I assuming, think, assuming that she's had them, I, I don't know that. Yeah, I think there was a movement, particularly in the 90s, and New York called Jennifer Grey called the new right. the new face when we were injecting a lot of fat into the face it was expanding the facial width and people were looking very different the whole point of plastic surgery and anything you want to do in beauty is to look just like a better version of yourself right, right? right. so right. I think celebrities are doing a good job now and what's interesting when you look at Renee during that period of time she did look different whatever she did but you look at her now, she looks the same again. She looks like Bridget Jones. She's got a new movie coming. So what happened? Did she was she reversed? I don't did, know. I can't I'm not her doctor. You didn't, you didn't I don't reverse the, the procedure. I, I on. don't know what she did or if she did anything. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I also feel that we should leave celebrities alone. It's their own private medical situation. And if they want to have procedures, we should let them have procedures and don't bug them. But I'm a doctor, I think everybody's allowed to have their medical privacy. Right. But having said that, now it's all towards a more natural look. And what we're teaching you in the book is if you're planning on looking your best, the first rule is do something and do it early. And if you do something and you do it early, it's very minimal, it's usually non-invasive, and you can keep looking your best without having to come into my office at a later stage in life when really the only thing that's going to help you is general anesthesia and a knife. Right. When you say early, what do you mean? So age-wise early? Age-wise early. Right. So how early? How early? 20. Start with a good skin care regimen okay. and stick with it. because So not a procedure. No, not definitely. Not necessarily. But I think, and I think what we outline really well in the book is not just just to start early but where do you draw the line because you know there's some people that say I will never have surgery but they will color their hair they will get Botox they will get some fillers everyone's got a line that that they will go up to and we show you at every decade uh, and at every comfort level what you can do to make yourself look and feel your best was we were talking about this before we started taping um, that you you're a Bronx Westchester girl uh, East Coast, suddenly you're living West Coast with the West Coast guy. Um, was there a big change in culture in terms of like pressure on you, how you oh had to look? Not, not yes. that you no, no, yes. First wouldn't of all, look I was as the... fabulous as everybody there, but. No, it was crazy. When I moved to LA, everyone was blonde. Everyone had enormous breasts. Yeah. It was just, it was complete culture shock. And I was an actress, so I would go, you know, sit in the folding chairs in the hall and just go, I feel very blonde impaired in here. <laughs> and then I met Terry and um, I was on a, this show on the WB called Life with Roger and we had been on a couple of dates and he watched me on the show. He goes, you know, when you make um, that face, you get that deep line right there. And I said, oh, I do not. And of course, then I watched the next week and I did. <laughs> just slap him. No, but right. I, internally <laughs> I slapped well, him. But he was right. And I was, I think I was 27, so I started getting a little bit of Botox. Which sounds crazy, right? But that's the whole point of the book. I saw that. It's not that I thought it made her look less attractive. I just knew in a period of time being a plastic surgeon that that movement over the next five, six, seven years is going to form an actual wrinkle at rest. Mm -hmm. And if she did a little Botox along the way, it would prevent it. And I don't have it. And she doesn't have you it. Mean doing, you mean freezing, freezing, freezing it, muscles it, then helps it become, prevent the deeper lines? There's dynamic wrinkles, oh, the kind... That. The kind <laughs> Well, there's dynamic wrinkles, the kinds you have. It's just you're... into the 1010 10 <laughs> wins news. Right. Yeah. Oh my Breaking news. Do it now. Right. Do it now. No, but it's true because if you stop that line before it occurs, it doesn't mm. occur. But you know what? Also in the book, and I think this is really important. It's, it's, uh, it is a little bit less is more. Do it sparingly. Do it slowly. I want my kids to know I'm mad at them. I personally don't care for that frozen face. And, you know, because I'm married to Terry, everyone assumes I've had everything done. I think I'm the only plastic surgeon's wife and certainly probably the only person left in Orange County with natural breasts. I just feel like the non-surgical solutions to anti-aging, there's so many. You, you talk about that in the book. You yeah. say yeah. that you've just had... Botox, and Botox and what was the other Sculptra. one? Sculptra. What is that? Is that Sculpt a filler? Sculptra's not a filler, but it, you don't call it a filler, do you? It's in the filler category in that it plumps out your face by injection. Instead mm -hmm. of, though, immediately filling, it stimulates your body to form its own collagen. 
enhancing the width of your face by plumping out your face it using was, your own natural system. Yeah, systems. it was created for AIDS patients who lose uh, a lot of facial fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it regrows your own collagen. So that appealed to me because I don't like that filler look where everyone's overinflated. And I have, you know, good cheekbones to begin with, so I didn't need that. But when I get super thin and, you know, you have to keep your weight low for right. television in the temple area, which you don't think of, you get really hollow, so it widens your face a little bit. Right. And so, no knife. No knife. No knife. No knife. Yet. My nose, my face. I'm not Yet. against okay. it. Okay. Is that, is that a never to. say never thing, or what, what do you say? Well, do you first think? of all, I, I'm a proponent of plastic surgery. It pays our mortgage. I mean, let's not get carried <laughs> away. And also, I think, you know, when done by a board certified plastic surgeon on a, an appropriate, realistic, good candidate patient, I think mm. it can be a really amazing thing. And who knows how I'm going to feel five years, ten years down the road. But right now, this is the space I'm living in. I'm comfortable with who I am. I eat, re I eat well, I exercise, I follow a really good skincare routine, and I do little things. Yeah. Little things, little procedures. Like the Botox, like right. the, I mean, I've tried IPL lasers and stuff like that. I, I, and it's all outlined in the book, and I'll tell you what works and what I think is not worth the money. Would you say to her, um, honey, I think it's time um, no, that but you... No, she would well, say... Well, he wants to, you know, have sex again, so... <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, not. the way it works generally is that she comes home and says, what about this? And I said, no, not ready <laughs> for true. that. Try okay. this other thing. Right. We have a section in the book called Hippest, Hottest, Newest, though, that we're really proud of, and that is... In Hollywood, they'll tell you what the hottest things are, right? And we're telling you, yes, some of these things are really hot and they really do work, but do they work for you? And is it worth mm -hmm. it for your particular situation? We outline those kinds of things for you in that chapter. Right. And I thought makeup and hair was a really <clears throat> necessary um, chapter in the book because when we talk about anti-aging, I mean, there's so many fun tricks that we can do, especially as women, with our hair and our makeup to makeup make us... Makeup artists are, are wizards. Magicians. Yeah. Magicians. Yeah. Magicians. Yeah. So we put a lot of that in there, too. Yeah. Um, hottest trends, we are John Montone, our morning, morning uh, man, did a story some time ago about big butts being the big trend. Now, you write about that in the book. Is that 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 is not for everybody? That is certainly not for everybody. But it is. The it fastest. is if you walk around L.A. right now. Yes. That's the thing. Everybody but, balancing cups. Well, yes, if yes, you really? look at oh. the American Society of Plastic Surgeons statistics, that is the fastest growing procedure in all of plastic surgery. It went up like. 300% last year and 400% wow. the year before. And yet it's such a trend, right? It's such a trend. It's it's kind of a ridiculous <laughs> procedure conceptually. You take fat from one area and put it into the buttock. Mm -hmm. However, it's because it's sort of a new field, we're seeing a lot of complication. If you watch season three of Botched mm -hmm. right now, it, we call it the season of the butt because we're seeing so <laughs> many complications we've never mm -hmm. seen before because it's a new frontier. Worst, scariest complication. In plastic surgery? With, with the butt in particular. Oh, the butt. Well, there have been patients who've had it done improperly. The fat's injected instead of to the buttock muscle where it's supposed to be into one of the large pelvic veins. It travels up to the lungs, blocks your lungs, oh and that's equivalent to a pulmonary embolism and you can die. My goodness. Yeah, so these are not procedures without complications. They can be very risky. We want you to avoid being botched. We want you to avoid complications. And if you're planning on maintaining your looks throughout your life, do it early, do it non-invasively, do it non-expensively. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it, and we teach you how to do that in this I, I think the notion of trendy plastic surgery, I find particularly concerning. I mean, what are the, I don't know what those butts are going to look like in 20 years, but one of the things, and I talk, we talk about this in the book, is the whole mommy makeover, mm -hmm. because I feel like a lot of people run to get mommy makeovers really fast. Oh, I just had my last kid six months ago, and now let me just fix it all. Meaning the tummy tucks the and, tummy and, tucks and the breast, breast jobs and the whole mm -hmm. thing. And look, I, my mind went there too. Absolutely. We talked about it a lot. But you know what happened? Four I, kids. Four kids. Twins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. There's a lot going on that, you know, it's tight. It's, you know, held together. But, um, you know, we talked about it, and then I thought about it, and then I put it off, and my body kind of rebounded. And I think that it's a really important thing. We, we talk about this, about how long you should wait, what you really should think about before mm -hmm. having procedures But you done. helped it rebound. It's not like she sat there and waited it, waited oh, for yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I wasn't like, Where, when's that, when's that butt coming she back? She ate a certain way. She exercised in a very specific way that's designed for her body. So she basically did Dr. and Ms. Guinea Pig to avoid the mommy makeover. And yeah. in her case, it worked. Now, um, a little bit about L.A. L.A. mommies. 
And LA ladies, can you give us any kind of, uh, I don't know, teaser for what we can expect, any kind of fireworks we can expect? Uh, on Real Housewives? Oh, on Real Housewives? Yeah. Oh, well, oh. this has sort of been an epic season. You know, it's funny. I thought this is my fifth season, which I cannot believe. Uh, well, you, you joined, what, season seven? Season seven. So um, last year I was our biggest season, season 10. Huge. Biggest ratings. And I really thought it was because it was such a cohesive group of real friends and there were real issues going on in the audience responded to it and I thought this will net it, you know it's going to decline next year and it's even bigger this year yeah. we have a new gal on the show who's added a lot of fire to the show mm -hmm. and um this it just it, it's fire yeah like, uh, well like thank problems? god not really fire <laughs> <laughs> but that probably could have happened too yeah. um well they almost died in the last episode literally all of them uh, yeah was we, this the buggy thing yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it was very very scary mm -hmm. and you know when you have a near-death experience it really tends to bond people and what what's so odd about this season is just when you think you know where it's going you get into an accident and things change and people behave in strange ways and and dynamics shift mm -hmm. radically mm -hmm. but it's the I mean the, I can't even describe the season it just keeps going and going can and you going. see a time where you wouldn't want to do the show anymore where it just becomes I was there five years ago to yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were there every season <laughs> no but like, is there something some kind of bugaboo about the show or or is it the or is it the pressure to look so beautiful. I think that um, it was very difficult for me to join this show in the first place, coming from scripted television and going into reality. And Terry was very comfortable with the genre, having been on reality TV before, and he understood what platform it represented, and I didn't care. Now, five seasons in, I would say, you know, I enjoy being on the show. I have friendships with these girls. And, I, and the platform it's given us, I, my podcast, Heather Dubrow's World, is doing incredibly well. We have this amazing book that we've written together. Our product line, Consult Beauty, is the fastest growing skincare line on Evi. And, and a, in a way, Botched came from it, really. Because yeah. Paul and I, who was on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, a longtime friend of mine, is my partner on Botch, and Botch by Nature is on right now, doing really and well. And I host an after show for Botch called Botch Post Up. So many wonderful things have come out of being on this show. So I would say I'm very grateful to yeah. The Real Housewives franchise. Mm -hmm. And as long as it makes sense for all of us, I'll stay on. Mm -hmm. And other than the, the, the Butts episode, anything upcoming on uh, Botch that we, should, that we should look for? Well, right now, is a show called Botch by Nature, which is our new show where we, Paul and I, it's a traveling show and we go meet people throughout the country who have congenital deformities. Oh, okay. And we visit them to determine whether it's the right thing to do and if it is, we bring them back to our world and we try to fix and correct their congenital deformities. Wow. And That's really sweet. Yeah, and so last episode we had a woman who was born a conjoined twin and separated at birth and the other one unfortunately didn't make it, but she was left without a buttock. And so I had to make her, and it's not fat transfer, I actually had to make her Created. a buttock where there wasn't one. And so we're really proud of this show, Botch by Nature, and uh, it's, I think it's changing lives in a really positive and way. And when you do a show like that, does it make the butt implant procedures and those things seem... I don't know. Ridiculous? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because for a period of time before botched, I was coming home and getting disillusioned with plastic surgery because, uh, you know, I take a little bump off someone's nose and they'd go, oh, I wish you took a little more. I, I'm happy with this brow lift, but this one I'd be ecstatic with. And I'd say, <laughs> and I'd come home and say, I have wasted my life doing this, right? And Terry is also a board certified general surgeon. It just seemed trivial after a while, and botched has reinvigorated my love of medicine, which I always loved, and plastic surgery, because now I'm really changing lives for people who really need our help. And, you know, we do, we do I think, as, as viewers, and you know, we, we, we do look at the celebrities, and we look at people that we've known on, on television for a number of years, and they come on the screen, you haven't seen them in a while, and you look, and you're like... Hmm, what yeah. have they had done? And you start, and, and, and you do start to judge, and some people say, yep. oh my God, look at that, that's a bad face. That's true. Is there a point where a doctor does, or, or should, or ethically is required to say to their patient, you know, you really should... Put a fork oh, in well, it. Yeah, let's stop it right here. Yeah. yeah. You're good, you're good. I don't know if it's an ethical question, because if a patient wants a change, even if they're a celebrity, say, you know, I want my brows higher, which is going to make me look like a different person, mm -hmm. right? Uh, will you do that? I, I am brutally honest with my patients, mm -hmm. and I say to them, I don't like the way that looks, or you don't need it yet, 
or go home and work out, you know, but... You've also had a large faction of your patients that you've taken down. That's true. That's mm -hmm. one of my specialties is reversing the effects of bad right. plaque surgery, hence botched. Right. But I've always felt that you should do less is more and try to talk the patient out of it by scaring them about the risks first. And if they pass that test, then maybe consider doing plastic surgery. But the truth surgery. is, if someone wants a procedure, they're going to find someone to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's the thing. So, so if you, you say no to them, they'll go right. elsewhere. They'll go, but that's why I always say that a patient should go to more than one doctor. Mm -hmm. Because if three people are telling you no, then maybe you listen. And we mm -hmm. talk about that, you know, plastic surgery is a business. Okay, so you go into a plastic surgeon's office and say, I want X procedure done, even if you really won't benefit very much from it or you're not a great candidate. Most plastic surgeons, unfortunately, are going to do that procedure on you. Right. That's why we have a very extensive chapter about plastic surgery and determining if you're a good candidate, if you really understand the risks, and maybe there's an alternative so you don't have to have plastic surgery. Right. Chapter five, you don't need the knife. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I, I love that. It's like, really? You oh, okay. Just have, just have <laughs> me read this. I did. I did. <laughs> Last thing for you yeah. guys. Yeah. The kids. What do they think of Four, four children, mm -hmm. which yes. again, amazing. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But um, what do they think of the fact that uh, you are Dr. and Mrs. Guinea Pig? Well, they love it, and they have been really, really sweet. And, and put up, we wrote in our dedication, putting, putting up with us talking about experiments and things for the last. You know, two years basically. At the dinner table, we talk about what we're going to do next. We have a really interesting experiment coming up about cupping. Yeah. You know how cupping was big in the Olympics? Oh, yes, yes, Michael yes. Michael Phelps and everybody. Says the recovery time is quick. Yeah. I don't believe cupping actually does anything, so we're about to test cupping. And so right. they hear all this, like, what are you guys doing now? Right, <laughs> so we're doing a bunch of segments for E! News. Oh, okay. Yeah, doctor. there were a lot of questions about that, yeah. What, yeah. What, what, whether it was actually effective. We're going to put we're it to the test. We're testing it next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you should get Ryan Lochte and see if you can... Experiment right. with him. Well, <laughs> I, I hear he's he's out uh, somewhere. <laughs> he's, he's working out dancing right now. I understand. Oh, that's right. true. <laughs> well, so much fun talking with you. And again, the name of the book: The Only Guide You Will Ever Need to Best Anti-Aging Treatments by Oh, a book signing here locally. Yes. Yes. We're going to be at Bookends in New Jersey tomorrow, Friday. Friday. What's the date? Friday the. Ninth nice. at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. at Bookends, New Jersey. Great. Great. Yeah. You gave the date, so that won't date it. All yes. right, Heather. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. much. Thank you, Dr. Enjoy Perry. It. Thank, thank you, you so much.